Georgia's major attraction is its people. They are honorable and honest, and living with Georgians is the best remedy for solitude and sorrow. Sir Oliver Wardrop. On May the 26th, 1918, the national government of Georgia in Tbilisi declared itself an independent state. The country faced many challenges after its independence from the Soviet Union. It was a young, inexperienced state, facing unstable economic conditions, political instability, territorial disputes and internal conflicts. Yet its citizens expressed great hopes for a new beginning, evidenced by a general feeling of joy in the air in anticipation of a new state. It was to such a Georgia that the British diplomat Sir Oliver Wardrop returned in 1919 after being offered the post of the first British Chief Commissioner of the South Caucasus. His name is engraved in gold on the pages of Georgia's history. Before Sir Oliver moved to Georgia, he received a letter from the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Akaki Chenkeli. A lot depends on your homeland, Britain. I hope that you will care with due diligence about the fortune of the martyr Georgia. I am convinced that Georgia's independence is in full compliance with Great Britain's interests and consequently it will support us. Georgia's loyal and devoted British friend made the independence and welfare of the country his life's goal. There is no precedent for the heartfelt contribution that Oliver Wardrop, whose sister was the equally noteworthy Marjorie Wardrop, made to Georgia and the Georgian people. Sir Oliver set a guiding example of diplomatic service by the way he lived his life, accomplished in good faith and with high moral values that remain valid for his followers even after almost a century. Uh, it is uh, nearly 100 years ago since um, Sir Oliver Wardrop uh, came to independent Georgia. Uh, and his mission then was to, to do what he could to support um, the sovereignty and, and independence uh, of Georgia. A um, well, hundred years later, in many ways, our mission is quite similar. Um, the British government uh, strongly supports Georgia's sovereignty, territorial integrity, independence, and future development as well. This was truly the kind of support that Georgia dreamt of when it was setting the foundations for the first democratic republic. This was the same kind of support the country looked forward to in 1991, after the restoration of independence. Despite nearly a century between these two points in its history, Georgia remains a developing state with economic crises, internal conflicts, and a politically unstable environment. But it hasn't lost its freedom, its independence, or its hope that it will continue to have strong and loyal states as friends. Well, it all started when I was suddenly rung up uh, by, the, by the Foreign Office. I was actually sitting in Tirana, Albania at the time and asked if I would consider going to Georgia. And um, it didn't take me very long to decide that this would be a very exciting move. And um, I was there, I arrived there in autumn of uh, 1995. Um, and immediately I was put into the hotel, the Matehi Palace Hotel, where my residence, the British ambassador's residence, was room 740. I remember that very well. And of course our job was to really open doors to the Georgian government and to Georgia itself, because Britain um, had not since, I think, 1922, if I'm correct, had not had a representative based in Tbilisi. So for me, it was a great honor to suddenly find myself there, uh, filling this role. Um, and basically we were knocking on open doors, I have to say. Um, everybody was very keen to see us. And I remember very well the remark of um, one of your parliamentary colleagues, um, who, who was um, one of my contacts at that time, that for him it was a great 
sort of personal satisfaction and excitement to see my Land Rover Discovery with me in it, going through the streets of Tbilisi with the Union Jack flying, and that he, after the, was it 70 years of, of Soviet um, um, involvement in Georgia, uh, that for him he had to pinch himself to be actually sure that he was really seeing this wonderful spectacle. So yes, this was, we were, we were trying to get to know people, open doors, and help where we could. Obviously, political relations were very important, um, and we were very encouraged, by the way, and Georgia has continued to develop as a, as a political um, democracy, um, with political parties and opposition, uh, and also the freedom of speech aspect. I think. Um, for that part of the world, for that um, uh, area, uh, Georgia is really very much ahead of the other neighbouring countries in terms of freedom of speech and the, and the media, the, uh, the diversity and the strength of the media. All these things we saw as very positive. Oliver Wardrop's celebrated quotation about Georgia and Georgians, spoken over 100 years ago, remains a guiding philosophy for British diplomats in Georgia who offer unwavering and unconditional support for the country's independence and sovereignty. In UK-Georgia relations themselves, I would say, are based on two components. One is simply a practical component. It's very much in our interests for a country like Georgia to be stable, secure and prosperous. Georgia is a small country, but it occupies a very important geostrategic position in the world. It's an anchor and a bridge between Europe and Asia. It is situated in a fairly volatile neighborhood. So for Georgia to be secure and stable is very much in the interests of the security and stability of Europe. But I would argue that there is much more to the relationship than that. It also has a very important principled component. As a matter of principle, we hold it very important that countries like Georgia should be free to choose their own destiny, to choose to be independent, to choose their role of government, to be a democracy. And it is important that they succeed in that aspiration and they can act as a model for others in the region. So there's a practical component to our bilateral relations, but there's also a principal component. What we want to see in the Eastern neighborhood, and that includes countries like Georgia and Ukraine, are stable, prosperous, and secure countries with whom we can partner with going forward, who share our values and with whom we can trade freely. Well, I think that we're two countries that share values. You know, we share democratic values. Here we are in the British Parliament, um, the, the, the uh, mother of parliaments, as we like to think of it. Um, but uh, we both share that belief in parliamentary democracy and accountability for the executive. Uh, we all want human rights, uh, we believe in property ownership and we believe also that uh, you need to have this in the context of a free society um, and I think we're also proud peoples, uh, we believe in our nations, we believe in our territorial sovereignty and I know that's an important issue uh, in Georgia that's very much respected uh, in this country. Fruitful cooperation with national authorities, extensive joint work experience, the creation and implementation of development projects and an expressed satisfaction in the achievement of their goals and objectives have been and remain crucial to British diplomats in Georgia. Support for Georgia's territorial integrity and sovereignty, as well as for its economy, was a driving force of British diplomacy a century ago when Oliver Wardrop served in Georgia, and it remains so. Such cooperation was vital for a country in transition and in the first years of new statehood. On the surface, we had a dynamic young president. We had a talented team of ministers. Um, and most importantly of all, putting aside the personalities, there was a very strong and genuine agenda for reform. That was the first highlight of arriving there. And as a political officer, it was, I had to get into this, try to analyze it, try to understand it, and see what the relevance was for my own country. I mean, I was representing Britain. But the other highlight was perhaps less uh, optimistic, of course, was seeing the decline. 
And I remember vividly um, early on, it was, I arrived in 2004, so perhaps within the first 12 months, speaking to members of the local staff in the embassy and said, well, you know, there's all this stuff going on. Isn't it great? And isn't it really terrific and worth supporting? And the answer was, yes, it's very exciting. It's very interesting. And it will be wonderful if it succeeds. But we have been here before. We have had these previous expectations in Georgian history, and they have usually been followed by disappointment. And I thought that was very wise advice. Um, and sadly, very sadly, within the course of three years, we saw hypocrisy, corruption, criminality, and there were still very talented people working um, at the heart of Georgian government, but the essential agenda had become perverted. And this was a huge, it was obviously a disappointment to Georgia as a country, to the Georgian people. It was a huge disappointment to us when we were hoping for so much more from what was a very talented start. The sadness was seeing how those were corrupted and the, the line on the graph went down. That should not be repeated. So stick to your values. If you say something, mean it honestly and drive it through. Otherwise, there's no point in saying it in the first place. I wish that Georgia remains true to its instincts, not to compromise. And this, again, is the Highland way. Yeah. Of course, everyone has to compromise a little bit, but part of the mistake and the weakness of Western Europe is always to look to compromise first before really identifying the things that matter. Do these things matter to us? Are they important? Yes then stick to them. You then find a way of delivering on the things that you think are important. If you get into the way of, ooh, how can we um, make things easier for the, for the person around us? How can we compromise? You're always diluting your objectives and you end up getting weaker. Georgia is essentially a strong country. The personality of the Georgians is so strong and so based on human value. That is something you should never compromise on. And I don't believe that you will. The UK has been supporting Georgia strongly since its independence. And going back to that issue of principle, I would say one of the most important ways in which we've demonstrated that support is through our support for the position of Georgia's territorial integrity and independence and right as a sovereign state to make its uh, own strategic choices. In that regard, we have consistently upheld Georgia's position on the situation situation of Abkhazia and South Ossetia in international fora around the world. We have been sympathetic to Georgia's desire to join the EU and NATO and we've demonstrated in a very practical sense. The mechanics, whether you join NATO, whether you join the European Union, these institutions in terms of human history, they come and they go. They, in our time they appear frightfully important and so on, but never lose sight of the values that are most important. Do not compromise. That doesn't mean being totally obstinate, being pig-headed, putting your head in the sand, absolutely not. It means trusting your instincts, maintaining the pride, and Georgia is one of the proudest countries in the world. There are other countries that will sort of, you know, do like this and look around them and so on, but Georgia is not like that. Georgia has an inner strength. It's a small country, just like Scotland, but it has an inner strength that will last forever. Never forget that. And whether you are dealing with the United Nations or dealing with Britain or dealing with Russia, never forget that you are a sovereign and a proud country. There is no need to back away and say, oh, we're just tiny, we don't matter as much as they do. You matter as much as, as anyone else, probably more. So it's uh, very important for the Georgians to have confidence in their inner abilities and their inner strengths. You will, like every other country, have face economic difficulties. Sometimes things can go well, sometimes they can go badly. That is whether you're in Georgia or in Albania or in Peru or in Britain or in America, these things go up and down. That is not the most important thing. The most important thing is honesty, transparency, human decency, identifying your values and sticking to those values. Then you will come through whatever difficulties. Fruitful cooperation with national authorities, extensive joint work experience, the creation and implementation of development projects and an expressed satisfaction in the achievement of their goals and objectives have been and remain crucial to British diplomats in Georgia.
Support for Georgia's territorial integrity and sovereignty, as well as for its economy, was a driving force of British diplomacy a century ago when Oliver Wardrop served in Georgia, and it remains so. Such cooperation was vital for a country in transition and in the first years of new statehood. We had a big involvement, which was particularly in the development of the, um, uh, the Baku Tbilisi Chehan pipeline, which was being negotiated at that time, which was, of course, a thing of great economic importance, but also of geopolitical importance as well. So that was a very high priority for us, and we were very glad to see that it was realized eventually, and, we've n and you now have this wonderful sort of hydrocarbon link going across Georgia, and which uh, can be and will, I'm sure, be developed and uh, made bigger and stronger. Um, we were also involved with British oil companies who were um, seeking oil and gas in, in Georgia. And we were just looking for opportunities for our businessmen and your businessmen and areas where we could collaborate. One of the important priorities for both of our countries is promoting economy, trade and investment. United Kingdom has been one of the biggest investors in Georgia for many years now with the flagship BP Pipeline project. What is the strategic importance of BP Pipeline for Georgia and the region? And what other perspectives you see to further promote British investments and trade in Georgia? I think uh, the BP investment in Georgia is a very important strategic investment. Why? Uh, because it is an investment in the long term. An investment in the long term. A company of the scale of, of BP does not invest on a one-year basis or a two-year basis. Its perspective is 10 years, 20 years. So having already been in Georgia for now 21 years, uh, the senior management of BP are putting faith in the future of Georgia for the next 20 years and beyond and beyond. Uh, so it's very important to this major international corporation, but it's, I think, also extremely important to Georgia and extremely important to the region uh, and to, to wider European energy security. Um, uh, and, and Georgia plays a key, a key role in that. Shortly after the, the beginning of the 25 years of diplomatic relations between the UK and Georgia, uh, just a few years later, uh, BP set up shop here in Georgia. We've been here 21 years, and our very first endeavor was the Baku Tbilisi Supsa pipeline uh, endeavor. And uh, that was the first major development to get oil flowing from the Caspian to, in this case, the, the port on the Black Sea in Supsa. And that was a very successful project, and it operates very successfully to this day. Already, the two largest banks in Georgia raise most of their capital in London. In fact, they joke to me that in some ways they are more British companies than they are Georgian companies. It's an example of the closeness with which our key business sectors are already working. And I think there's, there's, there's a great deal of potential to develop that further. And it's one of my priorities as ambassador. Bank of Georgia, TBC Bank and the Georgia Healthcare Group are premium listings on the London Stock Exchange among the thousand or so companies listed, including the five largest British banks. For Bank of Georgia, this clearly illustrates the company's reputation and the fact that it meets high-level international criteria with the proven business culture of transparency and corporate management. Its listing enables the bank to attract a larger circle of investors, as well as access to investment funds with its capital of some $4 trillion. As the famous English poet John Donne wrote in his poem dedicated to the diplomat Henry Wotton, the head of the country is the sun and his representative is the sun's ray that has to carry its light far away. In this sense, Georgia's unofficial ambassadors, the country's cultural artists and sports personalities, have a most difficult mission of representing Georgia abroad and showing the unique face and character of the country to those outside. One of the achievements of which I was most proud while I was ambassador in Georgia 
was initiating a new dialogue and partnership between the UK and Georgia, which took bilateral relations to a completely new level. A chance arose for a brush-by meeting at an international fora, or there happened to be a minister visiting London. And so we would set up meetings and there would be a chance to have discussions on mutual interests. But what I wanted to do was move it to a much more systematic level that we formally recognized this was a relationship which, which was important and we would actively establish a regular annual dialogue so that automatically, systematically, at least once a year, at ministerial level, representatives of the British and the Georgian government would get together and review on a much deeper level where are we cooperating, where do we have concerns, how can we deepen that relationship. The other aspect, we called it the Wardrop Dialogue because that was the name of Sir Oliver Wardrop, who was Britain's first commissioner to the South Caucasus. And it was a kind of recognition that these relationship has been going on for over a hundred years. It was a tribute to him, Sir Oliver Wardrop. So the Wardrop Dialogue started in 2014. I was very lucky with the timing. The, at, the appetite was there in London to embrace such a relationship. At the time, Russia and Ukraine were undergoing very tense relationships. There was then the annexation of Crimea, the illegal annexation of Crimea in our view. And this was another sign of Russia failing to recognize the independence and the territorial integrity of countries that had formerly been part of the Soviet Union. The Wardrop Dialogue was another way for the UK to show that we valued countries in this region. We considered Georgia a model in terms of its democratic development. In 2016, Georgia hosted the first meeting within the framework of the Wardrop Dialogue. This year, a decision was made to broaden the format and change its name to the Wardrop Strategic Dialogue. So the Wardrop Dialogue had political importance and pr practical importance. It enabled us to demonstrate politically our support for Georgia, it enabled us to deepen our dialogue, and it also enabled us to broaden the areas in which we cooperate. Because part of the Wardrop dialogue that I think was very valuable is it wasn't just foreign ministry to foreign ministry. There were cooperation between our foreign ministries, there was a formal dialogue between our defence ministries, but then our home and interior ministries began to communicate. Um, we also had the British Council developing bilateral, cultural and people-to-people -people ties. And then what was particularly important and appreciated, especially I think from the Georgian side, was also looking to deepen our economic cooperation. I think we're only at the start of you know, moving forward on British-Georgian relations, there's so far to go. Um, in terms of British people visiting your beautiful country, for instance, um, in terms of the strategic uh, relationship that we have, um, and obviously you do live in a, a hot part of the world, um, and we must take an interest in that, and, 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 we, and we, we will do so, I'm sure, in our trade in our cultural relationships, in all these areas, there's so much that we can do and learn from each other. And it's been great to see over the last two years how Georgian civil servants, um, how uh, members of your executive, how ministers uh, have been coming over, and also, of course, as between us parliamentarians, uh, talking about joint issues and how we can move things forward. Public diplomacy is just as important as traditional diplomacy. It creates ties that build the basis of friendship between countries. This is particularly evident in the sphere of education. Oliver Wardrop submitted an action plan which included opening a British school in Georgia and sending the best students to Britain for their further studies. Britain's current ambassador to Georgia continues in the footsteps of Sir Oliver, supporting education in Georgia in various ways. 
So, Ambassador, you briefly mentioned about the uh, education, which uh, uh, which is one of the important uh, bridges, let's say, uh, to link uh, UK uh, with Georgia, and uh, the flagship program that UK has been supporting uh, Georgia throughout many years already, which is called uh, Chevening Scholarship, is very popular in Georgia, uh, and uh, we have seen that there is a very big network of uh, Georgian leaders uh, who have benefited the fellowship programs in Georgia. Mm. Abs absolutely. And, and the, the, the straight answer to your question is, yes, we are enlarging the Chevening programme. I'm delighted about that, and I'll come back to that. But uh, I agree with you that this is, this is, I think, one of the most exciting areas of our, of our relationship. And I'm, I'm so pleased that one of the very first things I did in Georgia when I arrived uh, last autumn uh, was to uh, send this year's Chevening scholars on their way uh, to the UK with my very, very best wishes. Um, why do I find this exciting? Uh, for a number of reasons. One, uh, it's, it's a different level of connection. It's a different level of connection. It's not short term, it's long term. This is a long term connection that we are building between our two countries, number one. Number two, uh, I've seen for myself the, 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 the benefit that the experience of studying in the UK is having for the Georgian scholars. Um, many of those who have spent a, a year or, or longer in the UK are now in positions of real influence uh, in Georgia, uh, whether that's in government, in civil society, in business, in culture, in all kinds of different areas. Um, and so I can see the direct benefit that these scholarship schemes are bringing. Chevening is a wonderful opportunity for uh, people from uh, Georgia to come and study in the UK. We currently have over 10 scholars from Georgia here in the UK pursuing master's degrees. Chevening looks for people with uh, future leadership ambition, people who are excellent networkers, who can communicate effectively. The wonderful thing about Chevening is that we offer much more than just a scholarship. Uh, we offer the opportunity to come to the UK to engage with British in universities and institutions such as the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Yes, we are expanding the Chevening Scholarship Scheme. Yes, we have restarted our John Smith uh, Fellowship uh, Trust, uh, Trust Fellowships uh, for mid-career professionals. Uh, we uh, send one or two very carefully chosen uh, individuals each year on the International Leaders Programme. Um, and uh, uh, I'm delighted that uh, in 2017 we are also restarting the Mansion House Scholarship Scheme, which is run by the Lord Mayor of the City of London. Uh, with a particular focus on, on business uh, and business links. So uh, these links are increasing. Um, uh, it's an investment in the future of the UK-Georgia relationship, and I'm very, very, very pleased to see that. In this sense, Georgia's unofficial ambassadors, the country's cultural artists and sports personalities, have a most difficult mission of representing Georgia abroad and showing the unique face and character of the country to those outside. My story is that I am from Georgia. I am happy to be one of our unofficial Georgian ambassadors. But I never noticed it in the sky before. Music does a lot, and I believe it can be one of our country's greatest ambassadors. Nobody alive can take it away from me. And I feel like I've known for a Every single British diplomat who's been posted to Georgia has fallen in love with the country and has fallen in love with the people. Georgia is famous for its hospitality. 
But as a diplomat and on a professional level, what I would say has really marked out the relationship with Georgia and certainly made it for me the pinnacle of my career, the highlight of my professional 30 years as a diplomat, is that our talks with the Georgian uh, leaders and people and from all walks of life is that they were real. I never felt like I had to pretend. I never felt like I had to dress up in fine protocol. Every time I went to meet any Georgian, we had a really frank discussion. And so everything I said was genuine. When I praised them for an achievement, it came from the heart and was genuine. And when I expressed a concern, I always got a sincere reply from the Georgian side. That is very, very unusual in diplomatic terms. I was hugely fortunate in being in Georgia because, and I think more fortunate than an English person would be, being Scottish, there is a clear connection in the Highland mentality. Georgia is, Georgia is a Highland country. I come from the Highlands of Scotland, and I immediately found it easy to communicate. I mean, the language is, is put that on one side, but the mental wavelength was very similar. The things that we regarded as challenging, the things that made us angry, or the things that we wanted to do, the dynamism, there was a, there's a great similarity, and it's right across Europe in the Highland mentality, which is very different, in Britain's case, the difference between the north of the country and the south, the difference between Scotland and England, even between the highlands of Scotland and the lowlands of Scotland. So at, at a personal level, the person-to-person or people-to-people contact that I really valued was getting to know the people around me, the local staff in the embassy obviously, but also the Georgians I came into contact with, whether they were officials or more often than not, the non-officials. And time and again, I was reminded that the values that we share are very, very close, very, very important and very deep. It doesn't matter that my country, Scotland, is thousands of miles on one periphery of Europe and Georgia is thousands of miles in the other directory, in the other direction on the periphery of Europe. There is a natural human connection, and that was one of the things that I prized most about running the embassy. I felt very fortunate being in a country which had such a deep history, such a clear sense of human value, and this connected absolutely with the place that I had just come from. They were the best team I've ever worked for. But the frankness we had and the warmth we encountered with the Georgian people as a whole is unprecedented. And I've been 30 years as a diplomat and I have never seen anything like that. I think Georgia is a role model um, for the region in terms of its democratic development and in terms of the role that institutions play, democratic institutions play in Georgian society. I think Georgia is a role model. Um, I arrived in this country just one month before um, parliamentary elections in 2016. Uh, and I saw for myself, as an observer of the elections, uh, uh, how the system worked efficiently, peacefully, um, smoothly, uh, and how the end result was a fair representation of the views of the people of Georgia. Um, it was very impressive. My starting point is uh, Georgia is, is, is a role model for the region and uh, I'm sure my uh, colleague who was the first to sit in this role as British ambassador in 1992, uh, sorry 1995 was the first ambassador was appointed, uh, uh, would be deeply impressed, deeply impressed by the, the transformation mm -hmm. that has taken place uh, in Georgian society and would be deeply impressed by the role that uh, the whole of society, not just the politicians, not just the governments, not just the 
uh, lawyers or the, the, the judges, the whole of society has played uh, in bringing about that transition. A monument to the memory of Oliver Wardrop stands in front of the Parliament building in the centre of Tbilisi. Its presence is an important reminder of the role of British parliamentary democracy for Georgia. The monument symbolises the relations that our two parliaments and our two countries have enjoyed in the past and will undoubtedly continue to enjoy in the future. I think that um, Georgia has every prospect of it is already a successful country, you are already part of Europe. Uh, become a sort of beacon for a proper um, uh, democratic development and, and for freedom of speech and pluralism, uh, both within the political uh, structures and also within the media. So I would join those who, who uh, uh, applaud Georgia in that sense.